fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he's got rhythm. Both of them. Maloney. Oh, he's, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up there. Oh, my God. Oh, big crash. Oh, my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. Six and three close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my oh god! My god, what? returns yet again here for week five of the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge with all coverage on Australia's own SimSpeed TV around Road Atlanta. Gosh, I'm almost sick of this circuit. It's one of my favorite of all the motorsports, but we've been here so much in the past month. We've had the Petit Le Mans. We've had Just Send It. And now today, our TCR talent will be able to Hopefully not trundle their way around here. It's a very big challenge is Road Atlanta, but hopefully pedal their way around this exciting undulating layout. From myself, Jonathan Simon, welcome along. I've got Brock Caddy alongside me, Jay Kennedy behind the scenes in production. Brock, welcome yet again to Road Atlanta. There are the track details up on screen. Now we know it's a 30 minute race, but most of all, this track has some uh, brilliant challenges through the first sector, the yeses proved to be pivotal to nailing a lap around here but then that long back straight on the run down to turn 10 is always quite some good fun good evening everybody and it is great to be here with sim speed watching the tcr action here from road atlanta and you're quite right road atlanta the s yes, is pretty much this whole circuit you need to nail it to actually get that pole position and get the car working well i like to think of this circuit as a street circuit that's actually a permanent circuit as weird as that sounds it's tight it's got a lot of undulating twists, a lot of hills, and very hard to nail every corner just right. No matter what car you're in, as you said, we have been here in a lot of different cars and a lot of different circumstances, but no matter what, it's really hard to nail a lap around here. And personally, I think the back chicane as we get towards the end of the lap will be pivotal for overtakes and holding tight through the first sector will be important to get the run and get set up for sector two to try and get some overtakes done as well. So it'd be interesting to see how these guys in these front wheel drive TCR cars handle that. But personally, I'm very excited for tonight's racing. Most certainly. And of course, like we said, 30 minutes of racing action coming up. Now the time uh, on the top left-hand side of the screen signifies our current qualifying session. Each driver has two laps to complete. And that is it. That's two maximum laps. And it's currently Cooper Webster, who leads the timing screens. And of course, Brock, he did win our last split as we watch David Haynes still complete his session. He did win our last split about two hours ago and currently on pole position to do the same thing as well. That's pun intended. He, uh, yes, he did win our last race a couple of hours ago, and he is actually the fastest driver in the Australian sphere at the moment, the Australian New Zealand sphere at the moment. So he's very much on the pace and no Jackson Susan Harlow this week either to take those pole positions away. So his time is actually six tenths faster than Alfonso Eurisha Mulas, who we did see last week uh, at racing out here with us. So Tim Grev and Corey Preston, they're both back as well, which is great to see. So I think that provided nothing goes wrong for Cooper Webster, and we've said this every round, but there's usually a lot of action, a lot of chaos on the start. He'll probably run away with this one, but I think throughout the field here, we do have some great battling. Second through sixth is separated by four tenths. Uh, excuse me, through to ninth is five tenths. So we've got a really close midfield here, and that's where we see a lot of the battling happening. However, got to be a bit careful here. We have got a hotter track than what we're used to for these guys at the moment. So 34 degree track temperature here at Road Atlanta, which means tyres might come up to temperature a bit quicker, but they're also going to burn quicker as well and have less to work with at the end of this race. Yeah, of course, front wheel drive cars, meaning that the rear wheel is going to take some, uh, well, it takes going to take a bit of energy to heat them up. Here's Corey Preston at least having a moment through the exit of turn 10. Now we just saw 
David Haynes promoted himself to 13th. How about Simon Mazomo? Simon Mazomo, no time to his name. And that is tail happy right there. That uh, was one of the drivers. Here's Simon Mazomo in the number 18. Uh, that was Corey Preston we're watching getting tail happy through the final corner. And here's a modem simulation replay, Brock. But for Corey Preston, like we said, front wheel drive car, you'd expect these cars to understeer generally, but with the cold uh, rear tires, that is the result of the challenges you face of a driver here at Road Atlanta. That's exactly it. And there are some very quick direction changes here as well. And just a, and a very bumpy track as well. We've got to keep that in mind. There are a lot of bumps and a lot of waves for this car to become unsettled for these drivers. So they've got to be careful about that, particularly on those cold tires and managing how they handle the car in the early stages versus the later stages of this race. Yep, so time to look at our grid for today's race here. 30 minutes of action, no pit stop required, and it is Cooper Webster on pole position, followed by Alfonso Uritra in the second position. So these two will start alongside each other today in today's rolling start, of course. Then it'll be Tim Grebin, Corey Preston. We just saw Corey Preston have a moment in qualifying. Let's see if he can pick up the pieces here during our event later on. Then the third row will be James Mackay alongside Thomas Shawman. The rest of the grid will be on screen. It includes Dave Roberts. Thomas Hins, good to see him racing in the ninth position, of course. Rounding out the top ten will be Martin Turner. Talking Mitchell Cloud. Of course, just ahead of David Haynes for Team Huge Ass and Slavin Prusina in the 14th position. We have 17 drivers out there. I was out there. I'm not sure why my iRacing, like locally, even Brock, my iRacing skips uh, Anigio Obeya in the 16th position. They give 16 to, to Yoda Perez. I'm not sure what's happening over there. But anyway, just thought I'd point that out. Ready to go for the pace lap here. I love a pace lap in iRacing, Brock. I feel like we should have one for standing starts, Stephen. I agree, particularly with this V7 tyre model, the issue is no matter how much warming you do in the pit lane, the tyres are not at operating temperature for racing. And it's an issue in a couple of other categories we have looked at, uh, that has been looked at, I should say, before. But I think that having that pace lap or, or a warm-up lap or an exit lap or something like that means that these guys get to cycle their tyres and make sure they're in a better position to actually race cleanly. And the issue we have seen the last few weeks is that all of these TCR drivers, they do the best they can with what they have. Now, this full lap will definitely help them get their tyres up to temperature. However, in previous weeks, we've seen only one sector of a lap, which is, in some cases, seconds to get their tyres warmed up. And chaos follows, because how do you expect drivers to drive proper clean on pretty much dead cold tyres when they're coming out on the circuit? So it is, it's a good concept, and it's really good to see here at Road Atlanta that they do get their full lap to cycle. And you can see, instead of going double, double file, their single file at the moment, weaving back and forth, oh. back and forth, oh. getting them getting some uh, warmth into them, making some crazy manoeuvres there as well to try and get them done. <laughs> did, you, did you see Corey Preston through uh, through turn the entrance to Turn 5 during the S's? Here's a replay. We got it. Jay spotted it. Let's have a look at this, Brock. And it's Corey Preston getting sideways completely. Oh. That is a brilliant super slow-mo replay. And he's still doing it. He's actually spun out. He spun out in live pictures. Wow. Well, there you go. That's, uh, I, I, I think that's the extreme of tyre war warming there for Corey Preston, but he'll keep on going. That's an early off track for him, though, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, hey, look, we saw Cooper Webster in the early parts of uh, this session in qualifying. He was doing some drifting to get the tyres up to temperature, and uh, Corey seemed to have taken, uh, taken some of that advice under, but unfortunately didn't work out so well for him. That's some brilliant shots produced by Jay Kennedy behind the scenes here of Corey Preston. Wow. These front-wheel drive cars doing their work, and I love the color of those rims as well. I, right now, had no sympathy for Corey Preston. He just said, you spun out, mate. I'm not waiting. I'm going straight ahead. You can rejoin at the back of the grid. But Corey Preston's uh, rejoined here in the second row. There he is alongside Tim Grubbin, the second-highest I-rated driver in the field. Cooper Webster is our highest I-rated driver, and he is also on pole position here. He did win two hours ago in our earlier split at 7.15 p.m. Daylight savings time here on the East Coast. Will he do it again here at 9.15 p.m.? Double trouble, possibly, for Webster in the first position. 30 minutes of action around Road Atlanta, and we go green for the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge.
watching here as we come down the turn one. Great start for Webster at the moment. Grevin's already up in the second place here. A little bit of a mess from third through to about sixth place here at the moment. They're side by side coming on. Someone off in the background there as well. Manages to keep the car well Shulman. and truly under control there. Everyone's looking fairly clean as we come up through turn three in the background there. The front of the pack is side by side. Uh, excuse me. They're line of stern there, but up the back here, there is a bit of side-by-side -side action, but everyone seems to be pretty clean at the moment. Good start through the first sector here. That was Thomas Shawman off at the first corner here at Road Atlanta. And there they go, trundling their way over that difficult, deadly turn five exit curb. Now through six and seven for the first time. This double apex right hand up. The second one slightly slower and ever so important. Long drive here onto the back straight. Here we ride on board. Kai can make his way past. It'll be interesting here, cold tyres down into this very heavy braking zone. Pre pretty much the heaviest on the circuit into this final little chicane here before we head over the hill. So not sure if any moves will be made just yet, but in the background there, there's a little bit of a try, but nothing's going to come of that. Probably smart at the moment. These cars just aren't quite up to temperature start making big moves like that but in the background we do have some moves being made there thomas hins at the moment was under threat there from martin turner in the background but will uh, hold his position for now he's going ultra defensive down to the turn one to go i met thomas hins for the first time at pax and now i get to hear well got to commentate him see him drive i should say as we see martin turner off the racetrack but thomas hins uh, already up a few positions, started ninth, currently in the eighth spot. Rear end here of Ivan Voloshin. Ivan also up a spot. So it was Thomas Shawman who lost those positions at the start, Rob. That's promoted these three drivers of Roberts, Voloshin and Hins up a position each. And we've got a pretty tight battle pack now because of this. So we've got to watch right up ahead here because uh, Ivan himself is actually pretty much at the front of this little bat battle pack here as we come onto the back straight and Hins is right on the back of him at the moment. In fact, so close, he probably can't see anything in front of him. So we'll watch for a move here. We'll keep with Ivan and, uh, and Hins here as they're coming down the back straight. Hins is already looking to get that line that'll give him the inside line down into the chicane here. Very interesting to see. Not quite an overlap yet, but with a little bit of heavy braking on somewhat cold tires. Can he get it done? He's going to give it a red hot crack here. Won't be able to get it done. Very good, Ivan there. Give him the space. Oh, someone's a spinner in the corner. Hins has T-boned it with nowhere to go there, unfortunately. That is really unfortunate for Hins there. Oh, big crash in the background. That's Ivan Adionis and James Mackay. James Mackay was the car that spun around. Ivan just didn't slow down at all, despite the yellow flags. Here's a modem simulation replay. So there's Mackay being spun around in that Pursuit Sim Racing TCR car. And then, oh, goodness gracious, that's a heavy collision behind. And that's not something you want to see in Sim Racing or the real world. That's it. I'm interested to see uh, Ivan's view from this. Ivan Hayorn is here. He's, he's coming up through the second part of the track here. He can see that he's there. I'm not really quite sure what happened there because he was right in the middle of the track. So uh, anyway, really unfortunate there because James did have a good bit of pace. So we're going to keep with the, another replay here and just watch what happened to James. He's gone wide onto the grass there and just had no traction, tried to catch it and then swung around. Unfortunately, Hins has gotten into him and he's in the middle of the track, did the absolute right thing and didn't move, which is important next. If he started moving, he's just more of a danger. But unfortunately, Ivan has come around the corner there and collected him. So we've gone back live now as Alfonso Eurisha Mulas is actually challenging Tim Grevin up the front here at the moment. These two have kept Cooper Webster on us. Now, sometimes when I'm in Cooper Webster's position, Brock, and I qualify on pole by pretty much over half a second, I sort of take the race as easy. I try to have a race with no off tracks just to build a safety rating, pick up the easy win. Do you think Cooper Webster's thinking like that? I think so. You, you don't need to put in qualifying lap after qualifying lap. That just increases your risk. We obviously have safety rating in this as well, so you do not want to pick up too many off tracks at a circuit like this is prone to off tracks at most corners. So you know what? If he's got a gap that's big enough to negate the draft effect that these guys will get behind him, and that's fine. He doesn't need to push any harder. Don't make mistakes. He will be okay. So I think right now, the position he's in at the moment with that seven to eight tenths gap is perfect. 
mention that this race has a strength of field of 3,785, which means that if Cooper Webster wins, he'll claim a good strong haul of 220 championship points for his challenge. Here's David Haynes on board in the Team Huge Ask car. He's right behind Mitch McLeod. Now, both Mitch McLeod and David Haynes have been working together. I've been keeping an eye on them behind the scenes, Brock, but they're making their way up the order quite well here after that incident for James McKay. They just have to get rid of Ivan Voloshin soon enough here, and then they'll be on a pursuit to Thomas Shawman in the sixth position. Yeah, I think that Haynes and McLeod, if you will, are quiet achievers. They just sort of keep pegging away at it. They make sure that they... Uh, that they we see them every round. They make up the positions. And that's what I mean by quiet achievers. Is they'll go about their race. And the draft effect is quite potent here. We have that back straight and the front straight where you can use the draft. So these guys, don't be surprised if we see them further up the grid. Because last week, they performed very well. They keep, they're, they're both plus four at the moment on their starting position. So I think we're going to see them further up. Particularly because they're great at racing clean. As Haynes has gotten actually quite a bit closer through turn one there. Won't really be able to get anything done through this first sector, but they keep working together. I think they'll be able to see themselves get that top five. And we've got a crash on screen now at the moment. Modem simulation replay. And included Gavin Sadler in the number 14. And talk us through it, Brock. So it looks like they're racing side by side. There. It's a bit hard to see from the in. in uh, in car cam there, but it looks like Sadler's on the racing line and gets turned across almost there by Slavin Prasina. We're going to look from the outside of the car now. A good bit of battling going on here in the turn one. Beard of contact there in a straight line. Very hard to tell who's wow. at fault. I think that could just be a racing incident there, but unfortunately Slavin Prasina comes off worse in that exchange. And I'll tell you what, David Haynes bump drafting Thomas Hins. As we'll head to that in just a moment's time, but that was a huge, hefty incident at Turn 1 that involved Gavin Sadler and Slavin Prasina. But Thomas Hins made a brilliant move up the inside of David Haynes at Turn 6, and then Haynes deciding to bump draft him in return, understanding that this is, whilst it's a sprint race for 30 minutes, it's still a long event. And here we watch uh, these drivers through the final corner. This is David Haynes and... Again, I think they're allowing Mitch McLeod to pull away, so they've got to be careful here. Yeah, Hinsey, he could be harboring some damage from that earlier contact with, uh, with James McKay up there, so this will be interesting to see how he plays this because Haynes, uh, he does have a bit of pace in him at the moment, but he's got to play this smart if he wants to continue working. Got to keep in mind, he was right on the bumper of Mitch McLeod not two laps ago here at Road Atlanta, so now look how far away he is. And... He's only losing time, but the question is, does David Haynes have the pace to actually catch Hins and pass him? Looking at, uh, excuse me, looking at Thomas Hins' car, he doesn't actually have too much damage on there by the looks of it, so maybe he escaped relatively unscathed from that contact. Yeah, exactly. So you never know. We're watching the battle for P4 now. Corey Preston behind Webster, Grevin, and, and Alfonso up ahead is in that number nine car. Webs to pull away here, really, are they? They're keeping him honest. Now, we don't know if Webs is pushing to the limit, whether or not he's just aced a qualifying setup or he's in qualifying mode. But nevertheless, it's a good, strong fight for the, uh, for the, win, for the lead for the win. Here's the replay of the pass. If we go down the inside here, Thomas Shawman, by the looks of it, uh, he's gone down the inside there past Dave Roberts, so he's going to move himself up one there. This is the this is the gentleman we were talking about. Did lose a couple of positions at the start of this race after going wide, so he's slowly clawing his way back to the pack. In fact, to the point that he is now plus one on his starting position. We'll continue to watch here as we come through now. This. Uh, winding downhill section on this uh, static trap cam at the moment. These are some beautiful images we're looking at at the moment. The way these cars uh, shake and move through these sections is phenomenal. So uh, we'll still watch uh, Mr. Hins here and Mr. Haynes because David Haynes has actually caught up a little bit. And now in the background, we've got uh, Giotta Perez. Excuse my pronunciation. That's probably completely wrong. All in this nice little tight three-man battle pack at the moment. So... Haynes slowed up a little bit earlier there to try and get a run on Hins here on the straight. We'll see Perez is right up behind Haynes here. So it's going to be interesting. Will Haynes defend or will he try and attack? I think he's probably a little far back. 
for the attack on him. So he's going to have to go full defensive mode here because Perez is looking strong. However, we're going to switch to second and third yeah. here because they are battling hard at the moment. Graven's in second spot there, but they are dicey. Preston's having a look here. He's ready to pounce. But Alfonso Ricci in the second, in the third position, I should say, is... Whilst they were slicing and dicing, it's allowed Webster to pull a second on this crew. So they all got to be careful as they run through the long right uphill. Uphill here at Road Atlanta, now through the blind braking zone of turn three. Got to make sure you spot your apexes perfectly through here. It looks so easy from the broadcast cams. But it's almost so difficult to see. And look at the undulation around here challenging. Who's going to make a move on who, though? I'm not sure. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know which is the bigger the bigger curve. The curves themselves with the absolute bumps they provide or the hills around here. The, the, the curves provide such, uh, such disruption to the cars themselves and the way they're set up at the moment. So we're looking at Greven here, who's pulled a little bit, but... Alfonso Eurasian Mulas is under attack from Corey Preston, who Preston last week, we saw him doing quite well in the end until there was that unfortunate incident with Scotty McQueen. So he does have the pace in these cars and he's definitely looking to try and do something with it at the moment, trying to pick up every little bit of draft he can. He's going to look for the move here into the last chicane. Definitely hard on the brakes here, down to the apex. You'll get that move done, very well done there on Alfonso there and up the hill over the over the hump here and down towards the start of the lap. That was very well done by Corey Preston. And Alfonso Richer, knowing it's a long game, there's still 18 minutes remaining, as you can see at the top left-hand side of the screen. Through the order, nothing's really changed in our mid-pack. It's still Velocian from McLeod and Thomas Hins. We'll keep you posted on that. The only change I see is Yota Perez promoting himself into the top 10 ahead of David Haynes in the huge ass car, but David Haynes hopefully make that pass back we watch the Australian he doesn't get the best of runs this is Shawman and Roberts on screen now Dave Roberts I remember seeing him two weeks ago at Road America have a brilliant event and so far now looking for a top five position on Shawman he is indeed so he's got a good bit of pace under him Dave Roberts we've seen in previous weeks has actually been quite the fast driver uh, and uh, he's, although he's sort of falling victim to Ivan Voloshin here at the moment. So this is, again, TCR throws up so many good little battle packs for us, and this is exactly it. So we've got a three-car battle with Mitch McLeod closing in from behind, looking to claim even more positions. We've seen him do week on week here. And the draft is so important, no matter what car you're in there. And up the front there, Dave, uh, excuse me, Showman is going a little bit defensive, but down the inside, Roberts is going to go for a move, not quite done yet. Showman's going to try to get it back up the inside. He's been watching the background. Voloshin, he thinks he can take some of this. He's going to go down the inside here through the final sweeping corner of Road Atlanta. Mitch McLeod through as well. Oh, my God. That is absolute devastation for Dave Roberts. Less brave than Mitch McLeod. We know that. And he heads his way into the seventh position. How about Ivan Voloshin? That's why he's the number three I-rated driver in this field today that make up this very high strength of field this afternoon. Is up into the second position as well, and here's a replay of that pass. We're watching here, we'll, we'll have a look at how we actually got this move done. Preston was just hunting Greven down with that pace that he's got. So coming down the back straight at the moment, Preston looks out wide here, goes for that overtaking line, very clean move. He pretty much had him before the braking zone there. Got the nose in, very well done. Textbook maneuver, if you will, and now he'll continue on with his race and see if anyone can really chase down Cooper Webster in the, la in the second half of this race, realistically. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it, but Corey Preston, after that, don't forget, he's uh, finally uh, making amends for his mistake before the race even began. And here's Alfonso Euricio Molas. Alfonso started this race on the front row alongside Webster. Oh, only separated by a matter of millimeters between the two. And somehow oh, they both remain Mitch McLeod unscathed. Off, sorry. Mitch McLeod Please? has gone flying through the final chicane. Oh, nearly made contact with Voloshin there too. Sorry, Jonathan. Wow, McLeod. I mean, you're okay because that was spectacular. And he's almost blocking the racetrack now with Dave Roberts.
trying to find a way past. Can't steal that base, Dave Roberts. He's going to have to remain behind, but replay of this one, Brock. Jesus. Yeah, we'll have a look here. I just noticed in the corner of the of the image there that he went flying off the circuit. So we'll have a look here at what happened. So Mitch McLeod, this is coming down into the uh, final chicane here. It looks like he got a little bump there, actually, from behind from Dave Roberts. He keeps the foot absolutely planted there, flies over the hills there, and actually turns up in front of Roberts. And is just going to, he's, he's blocking a little bit here, break, break through the curve here. And he's making sure that Roberts is not going to get that position back. So McLeod fighting uh, for a bit of pride there and making it known that that position is his. Yeah, you can tell McLeod wasn't happy with being punted in the breaking zone. But don't tell me that's David Haynes, it is. David Haynes is into the wall. Decent race two was David Haynes. And here's the replay up. This Very is turn six. Very interesting to see what happens here. Oh, he's gotten a tap in the background there. Jota Perez, he's just trying to make the overtake, but pulls out a bit too late. Looks like he's just caught the left hand, uh, excuse me, the right hand side. Oh, right into the back of David uh, David Haynes there. He had no hope of uh, even avoiding that because he was right to the left of the circuit. So that's really unfortunate. As you were saying, Jonathan, he was doing such a phenomenal job can you do there mentally now you know your race is over if you're david haynes you've almost got no chance but i guess you have to have that mark marquez never give up mentality well that's it i mean we saw him come flying off his bike at the last round and he's uh he's he was back on it and won the championship so hey do you know what right now you're thinking safety rating you're thinking i rating if you finish this race you might gain a little bit of each of them, and that's the main thing. you just got to think like that and have that mentality in this iRacing simulator. And he's still out there. He's still flying along. His car isn't too damaged. So there's still the potential, if there are any incidents, for him to actually fight back and get a little bit from it. To your lead, nevertheless, it's still Webster. We'll keep you updated on that with just over 10 minutes to go. Webster leads this field by four seconds ahead of Corey Preston, who we know Corey Preston, I thought at one stage was out of the race before it began with a spin on the formation lap. Second position. So good stuff from him. Followed by uh, Preston, uh, Tim Grebin and Alfonso Uricha. Those two started ahead of Corey Preston. They find themselves behind for the moment. Thomas Shawman, after going off at the first corner to begin this race, rounds out the top five. And up here, between Veloshin and McLeod in sixth and seventh. McLeod is hungry after that earlier push off, you could say, an earlier bump and run at the turn 10 chicane. McLeod in the talking car, and look at the, the numbers behind. He's got Roberts, Hins, and Perez all separated by less than half a second behind Brock. This is some good racing to look out for come the end of the race. This is some very good racing at the moment. I think that uh, if we look at McLeod as well, McLeod and Roberts, that is not over just yet. Oh, there is, there's some red mist descending right there, and I think we're going to see something come towards the end of this race. So right now we're, we're looking at uh, about, if we're looking at Ivan Velocian 6th through to about ninth, a 10th, excuse me. So we've got a really good little battle pack here. And even then, Velocian's catching, catching Shawman up there as well. So... You know, this could turn into a very, uh, very interesting battle pack as we approach 10 minutes to go at the moment. So, Veloshin has cleared out a little bit with Shawman up there, but that doesn't mean that they won't fall back into the grasp of those guys behind us. We've seen it happen so many times. Perez on screen. We're watching on board from Perez here. I don't know if you'll be able to make a move. It'll be a brave one, if, if anything, here, but... We'll have to keep it in the braking zone right behind Thomas Hins here. A little bit wide there for Roberts, actually. Hins was right on the apex, but Roberts, that compromises your run. But Perez now is going to look for a move down the inside of Hins here as we come down into the last turn. Very, very brave move through here. You have to... Oh, contact in the middle of the corner, but they both keep going. Very well done from both those drivers. Still side by side as we look at it here, and Hins will have to give up that position. Not sure how any of those drivers kept it on the tarmac through such a high-speed section of the racetrack. Is the modem simulation replay uh, coming up sometime soon? But uh, Hins and, and Perez, extraordinary. I honestly don't know, Jonathan, how one of those guys didn't end up in the wall with that contact. Someone should have ended up there, but they didn't. That was uh, good driving. 
get replay up and we saw it. So, um, Hins now on the attack on Yoda Perez to reclaim that ninth position. You what? Preston's behind Tim Grevin. So something's gone on for Tim Grevin at the moment. He's made his way back past Corey Preston. So you could say one hand on the trophy so far, Brock, for Cooper Webster. But it's all about Grevin and Preston here. I think Preston should be able to reclaim the second position. And opts to not send it under breaking here at turn 10. Yeah, I think Preston has uh, he he's rethought his racing strategy, and kudos to him. He he plays it smart a lot, particularly in these TCR races. So I've got to give it to him. Uh, he he's done an excellent job personally in these TCR races and been brought undone by some bad luck in certain circumstances. So right now, not doing anything silly. Now he's just got to play his own game. We've got nine minutes left to go in this race, and roughly speaking, seven laps as they've crossed the line just then. But so now we just have to wait and see what he can do and see what pace he has. Grevin, Alfonso and Preston here have all been relatively evenly matched in the last couple of rounds through Donington and Road America. So these guys, they are the pack to be watching as well as some of that midfield pack. And like I said, Cooper Webster, he's gone. See you later. He's now six and a half seconds up the road. This will be an important I rating gain for Corey Preston if he can indeed finish second. Or oh, nevertheless, he should still gain a good strong haul of I rating right now, but it's about um, what the best you could have done on the day. And I think with Corey Preston, he knows that second position is the best he can achieve tonight. Look, I think it's the best that anyone can achieve. Cooper Webster is driving beautifully at the moment. So right now, the ultimate aim is second position. That's a win for these guys here. They're in this sort of second, third, fourth position. So we're actually watching Preston here. He's got the run on Grevin on the back straight. We're going to watch down here into this final, uh, final little chicane here. And he's going to do the same move. This is almost a carbon copy. Uh, Grevin gives him a little bump on the back there, just going, Hi, I'm here. But he'll get that move done. Alfonso now looking for that third position. He's looking to the outside. Probably not going to work there. We'll have to just keep it nice and tight, try and get the run into turn one. I don't know if we'll see a move here. Alfonso's probably a little bit far back, but Preston now back into that second position. And right behind Ivan Veloshin was alongside Mitch McLeod. He tried to make a move on Thomas Shawman for the fifth position. And then... Mitch McLeod just barged his way past. I have to say cleanly, though, so nothing illegal. But here's the replay on screen here, presented by Modem Simulation. And there's Mitch McLeod on the right side in the number 12. We're right on board with him and straight past with confidence. We know McLeod isn't afraid to make some moves, and uh, he's, uh, he's showing that tonight, like you said earlier. So there's a brave driver in this field. It is Mitch McLeod. Now he's plus six there in sixth position as the number 12 car. So again, serves to make some good eye rating, uh, eye rating gains. Roberts versus Yoda Perez. Perez off the racetrack at turn six. Perez rejoins now right behind. I'm there and hopefully no more positions. I'm actually a little disappointed from Thomas Hins. Would hope that Thomas Hins would uh, be a lot higher up the order, but he hasn't had the best of races so far. Been involved in a lot of drama as we watch Mitch McLeod here. Now, up into the fifth position, possibly. Tell you what, with six minutes to go, with the three battling up ahead, I wouldn't be surprised if Mitch McLeod even finishes second. Stranger things have happened, Jonathan. Stranger things have happened. Let me put it that way. So, <laughs> he is pushing hard at the moment. Uh, McLeod, he smells the blood in the water. He knows those guys up in second, third, and fourth there. And just to mention, Grevin has actually gone back up to second on my timing sheet here. So... That battle is definitely not over, and we've still got five laps here, and a lot can happen in such a short lap here at Road Atlanta because of the, the comp complex nature of this circuit. So McLeod's already pulling a distance here on Shawman and making it known that he is here to play. So his qualifying efforts haven't been brilliant, but his race, perfect execution at the moment. Stated on the gaps, it's currently 3.3 seconds, and it was 3.5. That's the gap between... McLeod and the three up ahead battling for your final two podium positions. So that's going to be important to look out for here with just a few laps remaining at Road Atlanta. Turn seven. And looking to get back in a second. Now this is what McLeod needs. He needs uh, Preston here, Brock, to make a move and slow these three down so they can reel him into him. Oh, that's exactly it. And right now, Grevin is looking. He's looking. He's 
Uh, he's going to go wide here. Alfonso might actually get the run here. Excuse me. He's looking at this. So he's Preston was uh, a little bit compromised there and will fall off the back of Grevin, but Alfonso uh, Grisha Mulas will not take that position. That's actually spread them out even more. And McLeod in the background there is under attack from Shawman and Veloshin. So I don't know if McLeod will be able to get up to the back of these guys because Shawman looks like he's got some late race pace. That'd be a little too late. Mitch McLeod's now 2.9 seconds behind, but he's got those two guys you were mentioning, Brock, of Shawman and Veloshin past him. And that's exactly what he doesn't need at this stage of the race. So we'll keep an eye on that. Thomas Hins makes his way past Dave Roberts. I think Dave Roberts was trying to make a move on Yoda Perez, and of course it uh, resulted in him losing that position to Thomas Hinn. So all the racing is taking place here in the closing stages, and that is because, Brock, look at the timing screen at the top left-hand side of, uh, of the screen. Less than four minutes remaining. It's amazing how quickly these races fly by. Like, seriously, there's so much action to watch here and so much to take in. So... Uh, I, I can't believe it, to be honest with you. And Hinsey, uh, in this Motor Simulations replay, has gotten past Dave Roberts, who has unfortunately uh, not had the best luck and is falling back down the pack at the moment. But we will go back live now and have a look at uh, Mitch McLeod. Preston is now making a move. He's having a look around the outside here. Very, very wiggly there into this last chicane. He's only got about three laps to make this work, so he's got to push hard for that second position. He's going to have a look down the inside at the last turn here. That was a late decision there. Will he get it done? He's actually pulled out of that around the apex just to make sure he didn't hit Grevin. Very respectful and polite racing there. We'll pull back in. Kudos to Corey Preston for not pushing that and making an incident happen. No way. Three wide behind into turn one. Oh, goodness gracious, that's never worked at Road Atlanta. Two wide never works through there. And these people were thinking about going three wide. Come on, guys. Wow. The confidence in our drivers here this afternoon in the TCR cars is extraordinary. But McLeod, Shawman, and Veloshin not only remain on the tarmac and not in the barriers, they remain in the same position somehow. Up ahead, it's Grevin. Preston and Alfonso Euricio Mulas with only a couple of laps to go, slicing and dicing away for some important points and podium positions. I'll tell you what, with a high strength of field. Oh, Veloshin straight through right here. He just threw it down the inside. He didn't care who saw it, what happened. He threw it down the inside of Shawman. That's giving McLeod a bit of breathing space here. But what it's done is now we have a battle from 6th through to about 10th at the moment. At uh, 9th, excuse me, with Dave Roberts closing in behind. Shawman's looking back on Veloshin now. He's not happy, but we will flash to Preston and Grevin. Preston's having another look, but Grevin is having none of it. Preston a little bit faster and closer. He may get a corner cut for what he just did then. He did! Preston has a corner cut. He's had to give up third position. Oh, no! That is devastating for him. So now Alfonso up into third place and looking for that move with two laps to go. Hello. Definitely not over for Corey Preston. He needs to remain on it. He knows he has the pace. Laps remaining. Thomas Hins. Wow, Thomas Hins. Oh, I was going to say hats off to you, but then there was contact at the end of the day with Voloshin, who's now demoted and shuffled back to the 10th position. My goodness, it's, uh, it's hard to keep track, isn't it, Jonathan? We have got so much to look at here, and these guys, they're just swapping and changing every lap. And that's actually, that, those few moves have spread out that midfield just a little bit at the moment, but guaranteed in the next, we, we've got a lap and a half left here, but something is going to happen in that time. So well, I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll flash to third place, which is Alfonso Eurisha Mulas, who's right on the back of Tim Grevin at the moment, and Corey Preston is pushing hard. He got a bit of air off the curb there before the back straight, absolutely hounding his car at the moment to try to get something out of it. Alfonso, Yurisha Mula, though, looking strong at the moment, right in the draft of Grevin. He's going to pull out here and try to take that outside line like Preston did. In fact, looking very strong here into the braking zone. See what he can do. Grevin does have that inside line, the preferred line. Mulas will give it up for now. We're coming around to one lap to go. This is going to be tense. Yeah, Preston needs to remain close. It's the final lap of the race. Waves. And like I said, don't count Corey Preston out of this battle for second. Gonna go for the inside line. It's hard to see from this shot, but I think he had a peak and now forms up. Turn one. 
Corey Preston all over the rear end of these two now. He's back in the scrap. And after that slowdown, I thought he was out, but you called it, Jonathan. He's right back in it now. And with that big slipstream zone at the end of this road Atlanta circuit, anything could happen at the moment. Grevin has a bit of strength through that, through that downhill section there, through all the winding S's. But now, will... Mulas and Preston be able to bring it back to him. Preston could potentially scrape a podium from this if he's in the right position at the right time. Very close on the back of Mulas. Mulas not quite as close to Grevin as they come around this uh, turn onto the back straight. Watching now Preston very close to Mulas. Mulas got to think about going defensive here instead of offensive to try and get Grevin. Uber Webster has a couple of corners to go and he'll win, but we have all eyes on this battle for the moment. What a splendid race from Cooper Webster. He'll take victory for week five sometime soon, but who will come out in the final podium positions? Will it be Grevin? Alfonso Uritra is shoved out of the way by Corey Preston. He's demoted out of the podium positions. He's not even in your top five anymore. That means Grevin and Preston in the podium positions unofficially for the moment. Mitch McLeod in fourth. Oh, the finish we never wanted to see with Alfonso Uritra who will now cross the line in 10th at the end of the day. But Cooper Webster is your winner. So much to talk about here in contact after the finish line too. That was uh, that was unfortunate for him. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to lie to you, Mulas deserved a lot better than what he got there. Uh, and uh, it was uh, was a very bad, uh, very bad dish to be served up. And you're right about that contact after the finish line. So... Uh, you got to feel sorry for Mulas. He did such a good job in this race. He was fighting so hard at it. And it, it all came unstuck. Quite literally two corners from the end of this race. I didn't even know where to start. Well, well let's start with Cooper Webster. He's won the race and he's driven with dominance uh, for the Evolution Racing Team. And I saw Brenton O'Brien spectating the session at one stage, Brock. And I'm sure that he was uh, aiding Cooper Webster there. But uh, Cooper Webster takes victory nevertheless, and he uh, needs all that team support he can get because uh, he's driven splendidly this afternoon, and he's won both races, 7.15 and 9.15. Uh, Cooper Webster well-deservedly has all that support behind the scenes and has all that talent up his sleeve to use with a 14-second victory over Tim Grevin in the second position. Now, Corey Preston ended up on the podium. Of course, in iRacing, we know that that's it. It's... Uh, He's going to be in the podium. It's not going to promote Alfonso Uriccia in the 10th position, any positions higher, but it's a podium. I think Preston will know and understand that. Probably not achieved in the right way, of course. But for Mitch McLeod, he was aggressive, and aggressively so, promoted himself up in a fourth. So brilliant race from Mitch McLeod, a driver who started outside the top 10 in 12th. Yota Perez, who sat at 16th and was up 11th positions into fifth. Brilliant race by Yota Perez. Thomas Shawman ended up in six. Now, I thought his race was done after a first lap off into turn one, but he's able to uh, come back home strong there, just ahead of Thomas Hintz. Dave Roberts in the eighth position. And there we see, unfortunately, Alfonso Uricho in the 10th position. How demotivating is that after being inside the top four for the entire race up until two corners to go? Martin Turner ended up 11th, of course. We look at the drivers falling down the field. Didn't see much of Simon Mazomo out there for the FT1 Motorsport team. David Haynes for Team Huge Ass. He had that punt we saw from Yota Perez. Still came home in the lucky 13 number. Of course, lucky in Venezuela. Unlucky in most other places in the world. Uh, Slavin Prasina, 15th at the end of the day. And we know what happened to James Mackay, who collided, of course, after spinning... And the exit of turn 10, and Ivan Ionis in the 17th position went straight into him. Uh, didn't see Anigo Bayer start the race, I don't think. So Anigo, of course, unfortunately, unable to race this afternoon. And maybe that's why my timing screen had a bit of uh, some small issues earlier on. But Brock, uh, what a race nevertheless. What are your takeaways from this one? Uh, uh, just quickly, I've actually been looking at that incident with Preston and... Uh, it was Preston and Eurasia there. I think that... Uh, Preston went for that inside line, and looking at his car, he's actually just about on the dirt there. So he's tried to go for that inside line that was available, but he reaches close the door, so I'm honestly willing to call that a bit of a racing incident. Just everyone... Uh, 
drivers are trying to get that maximum position and this is what has happened unfortunately it's probably a little bit opportunistic by Preston but at the time he turned in that position was available to him so uh, in any case PCR week five another great race that has thrown up some questions some awesome racing and just a quick congratulations to Cooper Webster I'm really sorry that we weren't focusing on you too much, mate, but you drove awesomely. And the reason we didn't focus on you was you're just out there doing your thing. And again, a double win for the uh, for the evening. You can't get better than that. No one focus on me if I'm driving that well. To be honest with you, I'd rather not be shown on any broadcast ever in the future if I, uh, I drive that well. But nevertheless, uh, we head next week for round five, well, sorry, round six, week six for season four, 2019 here of the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge. It will be at the Barcelona Full Grand Prix layout, of course. I love Barcelona. It looks splendid on iRacing. It will take place at 9.15 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Daylight Saving Standard Time, I should say. I'm still getting used to Daylight Savings here in Melbourne, Victoria. I uh, hope you enjoyed all the action this afternoon on the Sim Speed Esports Network. From myself, Jonathan Simon, Brock and I, alongside me, Jay Kennedy, behind the scenes in production, bringing us some brilliant slow-mo shots, Jay Kennedy. I found a new job for you, of course. That was brilliant. And some reverse shots, as we can see here in our conclusion of the broadcast. Uh, we say so long from the commentary booth. Hope you enjoyed all the action today with our winner, Cooper Webster from the Evolution Racing Team. This is fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he's got rid of the outside of both of them. Maloney! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my god! God, what?!